Writing good drum parts is by far one of the hardest aspects of jazz arranging. So in this brief video, I'll address what to include within a drum part and also how to enter it into finale because that's a whole other set of obstacles. So this video was made during the COVID-19 era of online teaching. And one of my students, he asked if I would use his chart uh, as an example, um, and talk specifically about how to write a drum part. So I'm happy to do that. Uh, we'll take a look at it. And uh, overall, this thing looks really great, this first page. You can see that we have ensemble hits uh, here and, and all the way through here. You know, in the brass, we've got this little counter line in the saxes. In the rhythm section, and also in the berry sax, we've got this pedal on two and four. And that's something we can certainly lock into. So let's play this so you have an idea of how it sounds. All right, so I think that sounds really hip. Great writing. Now, uh, the drum part, really, it is a problem. And here's why. And First of all, I'll say that I appreciated the student's effort uh, in trying to write a drum part. Tell he gave it, he gave it lots of thought. Uh, but it's too much, right? As I look at it, if I was playing drums, I would freak out. I'd be very, very uh, tense, to say the least, uh, in trying to execute this. In fact, there'd be no way that that I could play it or that really any drummer could, could sight read this part. Uh, there's just too much information and uh, every limb is doing something different, you know. So here's some general guidelines for writing a drum part. Uh, basically you want the drummer, you want the drummer to see what the band is doing, plus maybe give them a few simple directives. So the top line here is generally used uh, to provide some cues as to what the ensemble is playing. And then if any of these hits, for instance, like this, you know, we, we could write that as a cue, but we could also write it in the uh, second space from the top, typically the snare drum space, but just right there, uh, as well uh, to indicate that that's absolutely got to be played. I'm going to go ahead and just erase this drum part because it's stressing me out. And uh, I'm going to start with a clean slate here. So I select it. You can see I use the selection tool there. Then I am going to go up here under edit and I'll hit clear all items. And voila, that part is gone. Let's talk about what really needs to appear within this drum part. Um, as I look here, we've got these giant hits. Ba da, ba da da, da 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 da, ba ba. So those are, I would absolutely include those as cues, ensemble cues. Then, um, the other main thing for this is this uh, pedal on two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, da da da, two, three, four, one, two, ba ba ba, one, two, three, four. So you can see that uh, beats two and four are really accented. So those are the main things. And then you also want to include the fact that they're basically, they're kind of timekeeping at the same time, sort of. So that's the information. So what I always do when I'm writing a drum part is I start by writing it by hand. So here's what I wrote. And it's a really simple part. You can see I've got these, uh, the hits that you're hearing in the ensemble. But uh, that happens right here. Now, in this measure, there's not much going on except for this two and four pedal. So these slashes imply that, you know, it's kind of like timekeeping, but the most important thing are these hits on two and four. And you can see that I used X notation to indicate symbols. So this would be hit by the actual drums, but up and then ch, 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 
on cymbals. Then you've got these hits, ba da da, right there. And so these would be like regular blocked in note heads as opposed to X's, because X's indicate cymbals. Then I go back to this two and four thing. Then I've got the triplet, ba da da da. Now, there could be some debate. Do I want to include that also in this second space from the top, like this? But sometimes, you know, I've got a, an issue with drummers and triplets sometimes that sometimes when drummers see a triplet, they're so looking forward to playing it that they end up just overdoing it. And then you kind of end up losing the uh, the beauty of the tension of uh, the two versus three kind of feeling. So I'm going to elect not to write that triplet here. They're probably already going to make a huge deal out of it because anytime a drummer sees triplets, they start salivating and they want to really bring that out. Okay, so then we've got our hit. Bump up. That is 100%. You, you want them hitting this. Then we have a fill. And I like doing this. I write the word fill and then I go dot, 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 dot. And I show exactly how long that fill will last. Now let's dive into how to work with finale to create uh, the kind of drum part you're imagining. First, I'm gonna start with uh, just trying to put slashes, let's say, in one measure. So if I wanna do that, I go to my main tool palette and it's already selected. This is called the staff tool over here. It's got a little treble clef. So I'll click on that and then that brings up this menu item. So what I can do, I could select a measure. Let's say I want all slashes to appear. I just click on that measure. Then I go up to the staff menu and I would go to apply staff style two. And I want it to be in both in the score and part. So I'll click that. Then I have a few things to select from. Here's slash notation right there, but I could choose rhythmic notation. I could choose, you know, there's quite a few little options here. So if I chose slash notation, I click OK, and voila, I have slashes. But here's where it gets tricky. What if I want, here's this part that I drew by hand. What if I want this, where I've got slashes, and then I have things written either above or within those slashes? It gets more complicated then. So what I actually prefer to do is to put my slashes in layer two. You can see that there's different layers down here. Here's your layer in the bottom left-hand corner. So how do you get them to appear in, how do you get the slashes to appear in layer two? It's actually a very complicated uh, sequence of events, but let's, let's work our way through it. So I'm gonna get rid of this first of all. I'm just going to go back up to this staff and I could, when we have apply staff styles to, why don't I just hear clear staff styles? So I'm just going to do that. Done. Okay, next. I'm going to go to staff styles and I'm going to create one. I'm going to hit define staff styles. I click on it. Now I'm going to hit new. And I'm going to call this slash. And then I'm going to write layer two. All right, now I went ahead and I looked in some of my old uh, templates. I'm working with this student's uh, score. In my own scores, I had this already preset up, so it, I can just go to it and it's really quick. So here's what I have for all the parameters in my own. And I'm gonna quickly do that to this one. So this is checked off here. I'll move this here. I see that display empty rest is blank. So I'll make that blank. Everything else has a little line in it. Uh, alternate notation is checked. That means I need to go into that in a minute. So I will. Chords is checked. Boards is checked. Anything else checked? Nothing else is checked. Okay, so that is that's done. 
Now, I mentioned that this was checked, so we've got some other settings here. So I'm going to go and open up what my settings were and compare. I've got a lot of windows open. So slash notation was selected. Again, I'm just copying from here. And then apply to layer two. This is the big one. Apply to layer two. And it looks like almost everything is selected here. I'll hit OK. I'm also going to hit OK here, and I should be good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and Maybe I'll even select this entire thing. And I go up to staff, apply staff styles to score and parts. There it is, slash layer two, I hit okay. Now I have slashes in layer two, which enables me to put notes, note heads in layer one. Okay. Now I'm going to do some actual note entry so that I can copy what is on this handwritten part and put it into my finale part. So this is too tiny for my old man eye, so I'm going to make it big. I'm going to use command and the plus symbol. You can see it increases the size of my screen substantially. I get to the drum part, and there it is. So I want this to happen in measure one. Okay. So I click on here. I'm going to use uh, the standard simple entry tool. I want eighth notes. And I'm going to start with, uh, the, with just the snare drum hits. So I got one there and I got one here. So you can see I already have these weird, um, I don't know, I don't know what they're doing. Circles and slashes. I don't like either of those. So I'm just going to hit Command Z to go backwards. Basically, you guys, if you move around your finger a little bit on the pad, you can get rid of those. So there's a normal eighth note, and here's another one. Okay, great. Now, I also need to have uh, eighth notes up here, but I can't do that in layer one. So, see, I'm trying to create this. So now, I'm going to switch layers, and I do that here. So layer two, I typically reserve for my slashes. So that means I'm going to go to layer three for the top. OK, so I get to eighth notes. Here's one, and there's one. OK, so I'm almost there. I'm going to hit this Select button. But I really don't like how this thing looks. You know, one thing's going up, and one's going down. I want the layer, the green one, which is layer three, and I'm currently in layer three. I want those to go up. So I'm going to go to my speedy entry tool. I click on it, and I hit the letter L, and then it goes up. It's a neat trick, right? Except that this is also going up. So I'm going to go to layer one now to address that, and I Click on here, and my shortcut trick is to hit L. And there we go. That's looking good. I really don't like how um, the dynamic marking from the above measure is there, so I'm going to put it here. So I'll ask that student to move those around later. But now we've got measure one. So this is an arduous process. I'm going to save it by going Command S. So I've saved it. Now I move on. So now here we go. I've got slashes in layer two. In layer one, I'm going to try to create this. So I can actually make this a little smaller so I can see what's going on in the version I'm trying to copy. OK, so here's where I'm entering it. And I'm going to go back to layer one. Oh, I am in layer one, so I'm good. I hit my simple entry and automatically came up rests and my notes. I'm going to start with that quarter note and I click and you can see it goes right in the staff where I don't want it, but I can adjust that after. 
Then I hit a quarter note. And you know, if you move up and down, you can actually create these X's. So I like that ride symbol. That's exactly what I want. Okay, then I go back to my rest on B2. Bring up my quarter notes again, and it says ride symbol. That's exactly what I want. Okay, now I have to adjust it. There's too many steps involved, aren't there? So I'm going to go to speedy entry at this point. And with speedy entry, I can drag these rests up. And I can also reverse the stem direction. So I'm going to go like this. So I clicked on it and then I hit L just like I did before. Now we're almost in good shape. The one thing is um, you can see that there are these little lines going down to indicate that the symbol is ringing, that it's not a choked symbol. So to get those, I'm going to go to the articulation tool. I click on that and then I'll click on this note. And I'm going to see if we have one of those articulations. That's pretty close. That's number 53. Might be number 53. I think that one will be just fine. Okay. Oh, I like 55. 55 it is. Hmm. Maybe that goes down a little too far. So I'll experiment again. I'm going to click on here. Let's try 53. This is a little better. Yeah. Okay. I can live with it. I do that in both situations. If there was a slightly shorter one, I'd go for it. You know what? 57. Let's try 57. I'm going to do that in the second one. That's, that's better, I think. So let's get rid of this. Click there. Go to 57. Okay. I think that's okay. So I've created measure one. Now, if I like what I have in measure one and it kind of looks like this thing happens, I can uh, I could copy and paste that. So that makes my life a lot simpler. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this arrow key. Then I'm going to uh, click outside of the measure, drag down, and I've selected just that much. And I'm going to drag that right here and look. That looks pretty good for those two beats anyway. Is there any other spot where I can stick that? Maybe I won't worry about it just yet. I can certainly put it here where that triplet is. So I'm going to make my screen smaller so I can reach it. So now I want to get these cues, and maybe that'll be as far as I go for today, um, because then you'll you'll have seen how to do pretty much everything. So I want these cues. I'm now going to uh, stay in layer one. Go to speedy entry, and it starts with an eighth note rest on beat three. So there's that eighth note, it replaced the half note rest. Take. I don't care that it says high tom here. It doesn't matter. I'm going to just get two eighth notes in. Okay. Now, I want to switch the direction of this. So I click on it with speedy entry and I hit the letter L and then it goes up. I also don't like that the beaming now has a group of three because someone might read that as a triplet. So what I do, I click on here, again with speedy entry, I'll click on that note, and then you hit the note next to the shift key right under the, it's a backward slash under the question mark, and watch. Then it breaks that beaming and I hit L again and then that goes up. 
Okay, it's looking good with the exception of the eighth rest. So I go to speedy entry and I click on that and I drag it. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, I could, I could leave it as is. If I wanted to be really picky, I might make those cues a little bit smaller, uh, in which case I would hit this percentage tool here, and then I'm gonna click on, you can either click on the note head or on the note itself. Maybe I'll go with the note itself. And I'm gonna resize the note. I'm gonna make it 80%. Oh, I did it to the wrong staff, so I hit Command Z to undo what I just did. And I'm going to hit it here. I'm going to click right in the staff. 80%. There, that to me looks like a nice cue. Do the same thing here. 80. And it fixed both of those eighth notes. Okay, is there anything else within here? I think you now know how to do pretty much everything that is within this. Um, yes. So this would be exactly the same process as this. The only thing with adding the, the indication of fill, I can do that. That's going to happen on these beats. Okay, so I would use the MF tool, I call it. What are they? What's the official name? The expression tool. And if I, after clicking on that, I'll click here. And I'm looking for the word fill. Um, there. Okay, we could use fill or solo fill. Fill is fine. Okay, I want that to appear above the staff. Then, Lastly, I'm going to this smart shape tool, the crescendo marking there, and that's where I find my little dotted line. And I go like this. I click and I, oops, I double click and then I drag. And then I can adjust it. And then the drummer knows exactly how long their fill lasts for. There's no question. I think that'll do it, folks. All right then, so that's my video on creating drum parts using Finale. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, as you can see, there were many steps involved. In fact, I think there were there's far too many steps involved. In my opinion, this is uh, a weakness with the Finale software program. Uh, but um, that's how I go about it. Hopefully this was helpful and, and uh, you can use this information. If any of you have tips, or you think that you've got a more efficient and uh, better looking way of creating drum parts, man, lay it on me. I'm all ears. So uh, good luck with your arranging and specifically with your drum part writing. Take care.